relativity holds that a highway of warp space surrounding the sun compels light from a distant star to curve before arriving at a rise. According to Einstein, gravity is ultimately space-time curvature, and it is warp space which changes the itinerary of photons, despite that they have no mass. In Einstein's universe, particles don't need mass. Gravity affects them anyways. A photon simply follows the contour of curved space. The mathematical establishment boasts that Arthur Eddington proved this explanation in 1919 when he took pictures of a star behind the sun during an eclipse. The problem with Einstein's curved light theory is that it requires us to accept a face value too far-fetched assumptions. One, that light consists of discrete particles, an assumption that cannot justify any known behavior of light. The other, that space is a physical object, is simply irrational. But an even more fundamental problem with Einstein's amusing curved light theory is that it boils down to a game of words. For instance, in casual talk, we may get away with saying something inaccurate such as, I walk straight. However, straight is an adjective, and an adjective may not be used to qualify a verb. The scientific term is rectilinearly. An arrow may be said to be straight. Rectilinearly is the manner in which a ball flies through the air. Likewise, a banana may be said to be curved. A rocket can at best travel curvilinearly. So what is Einstein really saying? Is he saying that light is an extended object that is straight as an arrow? Or is he saying that light consists of a series of discrete little balls that travel rectilinearly? Is he saying that warp space bends a beam of light like you would a curtain rod? Or is he saying that light consists of discrete photons that when deflected travel curvilinearly? Is light a noun or a verb? An object or a concept? A thing or the motion of a thing? What are relativists talking about? Let's lay it on the line. Einstein's disciples propose that light is both a particle and a wave. Thus, when Einstein talks about the bending of light, he is treating the entire beam as a single physical object. He is saying that the beam bends exactly like you would bend or warp a curtain rod, when he actually means that warp space deflects a string of discrete photons. In the subtle way, relativists treat light as both a noun and a verb, an object and a concept, a thing and the motion of a thing. It should not surprise you then that the mathematicians boast that no one has ever falsified relativity theory. The religion of mathematical physics gets the best of both worlds and covers all the bases. Sometimes a mathematician will tell you that light is a wave. If so, is this wave an elongated physical object that stretches straight from a distant star to the sun? Is this what relativists claim that warp space bends? A wave? Actually, relativists prefer to say that light travels as a wave. When light strikes an object, the wave magically converts into a particle. The mathematicians insinuate that this wave is like a little boat that moves from shore to shore. But then, if the electromagnetic wave does not stretch uninterruptedly from a distant star to the sun, where does it start? Where does it end? Other times a mathematician will tell you that light consists of discrete particles that roll or slide along the curved wall of space. The mathematical world regards space as a brick wall of sorts with the ability to deflect a photon. So how is it that a photon from a distant star manages to penetrate countless layers of space to get here in the first place? 
the unbearable friction with so many curved walls of space would grind a photon to a halt long before we ever see it. The particle hypothesis also runs into trouble with a well-established principle of ray reversibility of optics, which states that whether reflecting or refracting, light retraces its exact path. Light is said to follow the shortest possible route, which is invariably a rectilinear itinerary. How would a stream of particles retrace the same path on the return trip if, in the meantime, everything in the universe moved? Indeed, the retro reflectors placed on the moon by U.S. and Russian missions routinely reflect back laser signals sent from Earth. Light takes about two and a half seconds to do the round trip. Meanwhile, the Earth traveled over 75 kilometers from the point of emission. The mathematicians at NASA invented the ludicrous theory that one out of 10 to the 17th photons hurled at the reflector bounces back to the source every few seconds. This is quite an amusing explanation because it requires the mathematicians to point the laser and shoot the photons where the moon will be in one second, more than 35 kilometers away. Despite that, it is obvious that they focused the laser directly on the lunar retro reflector the moment they pulled the trigger. NASA's surrealistic explanation is yet another example of the extremes relativists go to in order to save their beloved religion. The rope hypothesis, on the other hand, does not require you to strain your imagination. The atoms comprising the Earth and the Moon are bound via electromagnetic ropes. The torsion on a rope has no chance of getting lost. Wherever the moon goes, the twined electromagnetic threads along which light travels have no choice but to follow. But the most ludicrous part of relativity's curved light theory is Einstein's suggestion that space is a malleable physical object that forms a curved wall of sorts along which a particle may roll like a ball around a roulette. It is not warp space that prevents the moon from leaving the solar system as relativity holds. It is that the atoms comprising the moon are connected to those comprising the earth via twined electromagnetic threads. The countless electromagnetic ropes serve to physically bind the moon to the earth. The assumption that light consists of discrete particles necessary for Einstein's curved light theory to have a chance in science requires an inordinate leap of faith. But the assumption that space is a rigid physical object, a wall of sorts that can in addition be warped, requires you to abandon rationality altogether. Relativity's curved light theory does not belong in science. It belongs squarely within religion. Curved light theory is a surrealistic concoction that by far surpasses anything that Alice encountered in Wonderland. Mm -hmm.